what was the biggest leap of faith you ever had to take? Or better yet, what was the biggest leap you ever had to take? When I was 12, my brother convinced me that it was a good idea to go and jump off a bridge, a 65 meter bridge to be exact, where we did a bungee jump and a bridge jump. And you know what I realized when I got at the bottom, when I took that leap of faith, even though I was initially scared, I wanted to do it again. We have been privileged to be able to minister on the topic of evangelism in our Befriend series. And we trust that once the series is finished, that you are equipped and ready to go and do the Lord's work. Now I'm gonna ask this last question just one more time, because we've been asking it the couple of weeks, the couple of past couple of weeks. What do you imagine when you think of evangelism? Is it still the street preacher? the guy who is knocking on your door, um, selling a Bible, maybe the what would Jesus do movement in full flight? It's actually a trick question. You know why? Because if you still see that image, you should be able to see yourself as the evangelist. When you think of evangelism, you should see yourself as well, because why? Evangelism is for everyone. You see, Whenever we think of evangelism, we always tend to go to the missionary side of it. And not that there's anything wrong with it, but I think we miss sometimes that God has placed us in in areas in our lives, in spheres and in workplaces where He knows we can make a difference. He has placed us there strategically. Now, I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying we should stop Um, doing outreaches, doing missions, doing things like street store that we do every year, which is a great blessing and a great success every year. But that is not the only place where you are able to evangelize. And I think that's what we really need to take a look at. Now, some of you might be thinking, you know, you don't know how godless my environment is, my workplace. You don't know the type of people I'm working with maybe even your family. You might not have a family that has a religious background and you're saying, Albert, you don't know what our family's take on religion is. It's extremely difficult to speak about anything spiritual with them. And it's true, it might be difficult. And if you're finding it difficult to be able to share the good news, if you find that it's a little bit awkward for you, then welcome to our evangelism series, a place where you learn how to befriend someone first and then eventually introducing them to the friend that changed your life, the friend Jesus Christ. And today we want to encourage you to take this last final step and that is to take the leap. Now, over the last few weeks, we have been discussing some practical guidelines as to how we can evangelize in the 21st century and in the 21st century world. And you would know by now that it is not as difficult as it looks. It's sometimes it's, it's just as easy as opening a conversation. You would know by now that you can do this. You are qualified to do it. You don't need some sort of special uh, diploma or, or a degree in theology to be able to evangelize. We learned that the first step in friendship evangelism was to know their name and to add value. And today we are going to speak about to take the leap. We will put our words into actions. And that's why I'm so excited about that. Now, I asked the biggest leap of faith you ever had to take. And I spoke about the fact that when I was 12, uh, my brother convinced me, now we should go and jump off a bridge. Obviously, it was, it was something safe. Well, as safe as jumping off a bridge can be. And um, I realized that even though I was so scared, even though I was so uncertain as to whether I should do this, I think... Honestly, the wisdom wasn't there initially because I'm, I was 12 years old, so I, I could just jump. And I was scared, but the mo- moment I got to the ground and saw how people was cheering me on, I immediately realized, let's go again. <laughs> 
You see, when taking that leap, that leap of faith, it's all or nothing, literally. When you're in the air, there's no turning back. And that's sometimes where we get scared, when we start to look down. And it's exactly the same in evangelism. Some, sometimes to take that leap of faith is the scary part. But you see, it sometimes is easier to share the good news with a complete stranger. But when it comes to sharing the good news with people in our environments, our friends, it sometimes has the sense of commitment to it. So you know it's either all in or nothing. You take that leap of faith and things can either go north or south. But can I set you free from your fear today? Because you know what? I can understand that it might be daunting, but there is someone given to us as a person, as a friend, who is not only responsible for the outcome of someone accepting Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but he also knows when it's going to happen and whether it's going to happen. And that is the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you read through any evangelism moment in the Bible, you'll see that the Holy Spirit was present. If we read about Jesus, how he had dinners with with people, this man could really evangelize on a different level. He was able to encourage people, to tell them about his heavenly father, to share the good news with them. And you see, Jesus did this and people didn't always even know who he was. Because when Jesus was in the garden, when they arrested him, they also had to point out, oh, it's this guy. So Jesus was fully man on earth. So how did he do this as fully man? How did he evangelize and how was he able to evangelize on that level? You see, Jesus spent a lot of time with his father and he had the spirit within him to guide him. And we always think, you know what, Albert, but that's Jesus. It's not me. Jesus had it all together. I want to read to you from John 14, verse 25 to 27. It says, it's Jesus speaking here. He says, I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all these things and remind you of everything I have told you. You see, in order for us to do the work of God, to be able to evangelize, we can't do it on our own. We need to partner with the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us that anyone who accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior receives God's Spirit. It actually says in Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14, in Him you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. It's amazing. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of His glory. So are you saved and gave your life to Jesus? If you have arrived in that point, congratulations. God's Spirit is within you. So in evangelism, there are practical steps and guidelines as to how I can take the leap. And I'm going to share three quick steps with you. The first one is to ask the Holy Spirit to put you in the gap. Trust that when you ask, you will receive. Ask God for an opportunity to minister to someone, to be able to befriend someone. And you'll see the opportunities will be even more than you sometimes realize. The second step is to just do it. Now, this is not a Nike ad, but when you are put in the gap, when you are put in the gap to be able to minister to someone, God asks just this one thing of us, and that is to just do it. You see, we sometimes think we are responsible for the outcome. And that's not the promise that was given to us. We don't convict people to believe. The Holy Spirit does that work. So God asks us to just go and create the platform. The third step is to put your faith in Jesus. Now, in all in all, we need to realize that in order for us to be able to evangelize, we need to be able to put our faith in Jesus fully. 
because Jesus was able to do this as 100% fully man. And He actually gave us this amazing promise that when we see the miracles that He did and what He did and we believe, we will be able to be do even greater things. Isn't that such an amazing legacy that was left for us? Jesus said, we are also able to evangelize people as He did. We sometimes tend to overthink it. But every opportunity that you have to have an encounter with someone is an opportunity to bring God's glory. And I want to challenge you to really be intentional whenever you speak to, to someone, just about your daily life, just about anything. Be intentional. You see, Jesus knew that whether He was speaking to one person or whether He was speaking to 5,000 people, He knew that there was a message that needed to be shared. It might not always have been a direct message of getting saved and repent. It might sometimes look like just befriending someone first. But there's a message to be shared. There is definitely a message to be shared. If you put your faith in Jesus, you know this is something that's life-changing. And my prayer is that people will really start to comprehend that God wants to use you. He doesn't just want to use certain people. He wants to use you. And He wants to show you how He can use you. I want to ask today that in your spare time, in your time where you're maybe doing Bible study, ask God to really show you that gap where you have an opportunity. And here's the thing, take the leap. Trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. If you've enjoyed this series and you want more content, you're more than welcome to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will see you again next week when we start with our new series.